Good evening. We are glad that you are here. If you're with us here in the building or if you're on the radio joining us, we appreciate you joining us this evening. Our first song, 528, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. 528. We're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Let's sing. I know that my Redeemer lives and never prays for me. I know eternal life He gives from sin and sorrow. turn and mark your books 945 945 we use that song as an imitation we'll sing verses 1 and 3 well good evening everyone Almost everyone I have asked this evening, how has your day been? And they have said, great, marvelous, good. That is exciting. You know, so many people in this old world want to pick out the negative things that go on in the world around us. And trust me, there are a lot of those things. But to hear God's children come together, you know, they are always looking for the positive things that are out there in their lives i'm sure there's been a hiccup or two in our day you know it goes that way but that's just a little bump in the road you're just able to get up and go on and carry on and do the things in life it's sort of like the apostle paul's life he somewhat had a pretty big chug hole at one time he got uh, let's just say bumped up pretty bad he was in his heart and mind had set his heart upon preaching the gospel there in Italy. He wanted to go to Rome. But before he did that, the greatness of his life was to go having been around all the congregations through Achaia and Asia and others where the church itself had come together and they had made what contributions they could. Many of them were told by the Corinthian letter had given beyond their means because they were willing to give of themselves to help those people back down in Jerusalem. There had been a famine. 
there had been dryness, you might as well say, from the standpoint of just dealing with everyday life. The congregations all over came together. Those Christians, both Jew and Gentile alike, where Paul and Timothy had labored, and they had quite a haul. Paul took it back. He distributed among those who were in great need. And the blessedness of benevolence went so far, so far. But his bump, his chug hole, they arrested him. They arrested him. Those Jews did. For doing good, not so much. They just didn't like what he taught. He taught the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. He taught that name. They put him in prison. They, they just brought him for those who would listen to him and try to determine what to do. Tonight, there was a time while he was there, he was very privileged. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 24, that uh, Felix allowed Paul liberty so that those who wanted to come see him could. And I know Paul was always inspiring hope, even though he was in uh, jail. Felix and Drusilla, Felix's wife, came together and they wanted to hear what Paul had to say concerning the faith in Jesus Christ. The Bible says this, that after certain days when Felix came with his wife Priscilla, which was a Jewish, sent for Paul, heard him concerning the faith in Christ. And as he reasoned, did you get that? As he reasoned. It is far more reasonable to be a good Christian, to be someone who benevolently is following Christ, for all the good that she can do. Don't you think so? As he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled. And he said, go your way for this time. And when I have a convenient season, I'll call on you. You notice there, three things are mentioned. Righteousness, and temperance, and judgment. It's an interesting thing about the word temperance we're going to be studying in the class tonight. That word there that the Luke has recorded for us in Paul's discourse has the word righteousness before it. Okay? Righteousness is being good. Being right. We know a lot of right people, don't we? A lot of good moral people. A lot of people that we've come in contact with and are friends with right now. But righteousness carries with it this weight. It's not only being good, but it's being good with God. Righteousness that he is reasoning with to poor old Felix and talking to Drusilla is quite contrary to how Felix, as a Roman, would perhaps conduct his life. But when he said we need to be righteous, now we're talking about in a right relationship with God, and temperance. Temperance is not only knowing what to do in the right, being right with God, but it's practicing enough self-control that you will actually practice what you've come to know. It's important, isn't it? being able to walk the walk instead of just talk to talk. And when Paul talked about the judgment to come, it doesn't matter whether you're just a good person. It matters whether or not you're good enough in your heart and reasoning out the thoughts that I want to be a Christian. Because I know judgment's coming. I've got to stand before my Lord and my God in the day of judgment with Christ my Savior being my judge. And I've got to know whether or not my relationship with Him is what it ought to be. How about yours? Are you a Christian? Don't you want to become one? You'd be in the middle of a blessed 
family, a family that truly has surrendered their lives to him. By your faith in him, your confession of his sweet name, you repent us, and then you're coming to him in baptism, raised to walk in the newness of life. And those of us who have gathered here right now, those of us who know maybe as we ponder reason about righteousness and temperance, maybe we haven't been as faithful in doing everything that God said, told us to do. Maybe we need to change. There's no greater, more beloved family than us coming together and praying with and for you for the right relationship to your Lord to be restored. If you have a need to come, we hope you will, while together we stand and while we sing. Still at the cross, Christ will meet you there. He intercedes for you. Lift up your voice, leave with Him your care, and begin life anew. for this evening so uh, if you're going to be in our adult class we'll be talking about temperance and uh, we'll figure out a little bit more about exactly what that uh, what that was <clears throat> there's uh, several that we know uh, several of us know of somebody or more than one person that might be dealing with COVID I got this text from uh, Eric Leslie and he asked me to add uh, Bruce Merritt to the prayer list his name again his name is Bruce Merritt uh, he has COVID and he's being transferred to Huntsville. Uh, this is a, his kids are friends with uh, this, this fellow's son. So uh, it's a, a classmate of his children. So, and it's their father. So if you would remember that. We also got some uh, from the uh, Remind app. We had a, uh, one that came in today from Jenny, I think, that uh, was a friend of hers. It says, Angela Smith says, please pray for my friend. Uh, they have found several masses in her neck, uh, so she's awaiting some, uh, they did some biopsies today, and she's awaiting some tests. Again, her name is Angela Smith. This is a friend of Jenny Tate. So uh, if you would remember these, I know there are others. Uh, we are still remembering Lisa. Is she, do you have an update for Lisa Stone, or is she just about the same as far as we know? Uh, and there may be others that uh, we know of. I heard the other day that uh, Danny Matthews is dealing with, with COVID. Uh, he's the garage, uh, local mechanic garage here in town. Um, so it's, it's, it's out there. It's all around us. So we, again, we're, as we mentioned Sunday morning, we're trying to be as cautious as possible. And when we're in close contact, try to wear a mask and, and try to keep your, your social distancing. And uh, we'll do the best we can. But we, again, solicit your prayers for for the decisions that we make. We want to continue to get together as much as we possibly can, and we'll continue to do that until we, we see fit not to. Begin prayers, please. 
That's what we're attempting to do. Uh, are there are others that we need to mention that we don't know about. All right. We're certainly glad you're here. We got a good crowd tonight. We appreciate you being here very much. 552. I want to sing one verse of that. 552. Have thine own way. <clears throat> If we send this on Andrew, would you lead a prayer for us to be dismissed to our classes, please? Right. 552. Sing. Have thine own way. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we humbly come before you this evening thanking you for this day and your many blessings. We thank you for this opportunity that we have to be here to sing songs and hear your word. And as we gather to our classes, Father, we pray that we clear our minds and hear what you have to say to us, Father. We thank you again for all that you do for us. We pray for those that are dealing with COVID. Uh, we pray that you would heal them uh, and bring them back to us. We also pray for those unspoken prayers, Father, that you'd be with them as well. Father, most of all, we thank you for your son, Jesus, and it's in his name we pray. Amen.